welcome to Reality After Show coverage of The Challenge, Season 40. Tonight, we are talking Episode 9. I'm your host, Dan Monshaw, joined, as always, Alex Trias, Uh-oh. Polly Calafiori. We're Alex, Polly, uh, we had potentially the most uninteresting and an- most anticlimactic buzzer beater of all time. Yeah, for something that came down to the wire, I was like, I didn't really feel anything. No. Yeah. No, not at all. You know, I, I'm not feeling it. And, you know, I feel like they were flirting with something where, like, oh, maybe we can get the controversy. Uh, at, we'll know for sure if, like, at, like, 1 a.m., they're going to have Tori and Casey tweet out a couple of things like, e- you guys didn't see the full thing. I actually won. They're like, uh, we'll have to put you on Challenge Mania again to really settle it all. We're dying to know. Ah, I don't know. I think I think I think Casey lost. I don't think she's putting up a fight. I think she was pretty checked out and wanting to maybe go home at that point, um, because she did put up zero fight when you know the buzzer. Yeah, she had like, like she had that like initial feeling of like, oh wait, no, I won, and like her team saying that she won. But then, like, teacher's like, nah, we're, we're not doing this again. We're not doing this again. We're not bringing the trucks. Tori won. She hit it first. You're going home. See ya. Yeah. I feel like this is the this is the season of if things went a different way. And it just goes to show you why you should always play the game to be spicy. Because um, if things were to go a different way. This episode, mm-hmm. the whole house is getting flipped on its head. Very similarly to if things went differently, like the the first elimination with the eight people that went home, the house would have been flipped on its head. So I feel like this season had a lot of potential in order to like truly give us everything that we've always wanted in terms of like intense competition fiery blow-ups, intense rivalries, like starting, continuing, all that stuff. Um, And, you know, unfortunately, like, the luck is not going that way, which happens from season to season. You know what I mean? I mean, think about it. Like, if I'm War of the Worlds 2, if we were able to just blow through everybody and Tori goes home and Jordan goes home, is that little piece of resistance there that makes the season somewhat entertaining because – you know, we couldn't get them out. And then, you know, Jordan turns around and beats us at the end. I feel like um, we could have had that. Like if Devin and Tori came back into the house, it's, you know, it's a different monster. Like I think Devin is that person that would have immediately walked into the house um, and started turning it on its head and starting fights and calling people out. Like, it seems as though the the brittle the brittle bonds that have been holding everybody together for the past four years of like this friendship kumbaya era of the challenge and the vacation alliance dominance of the challenge um, is starting to fall apart. Like you're starting to see a little bit of tension between bananas and Devin again. You're starting to see. Um, foreshadowing of tension between um, Tori and Bananas, which was something that she had with Jordan prior to War of the Worlds 2. Like, mm-hmm. they were not Team Bananas before War of the Worlds 2. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, War of the Worlds 2 and forward, they've, they've been Team Bananas. Um, so... You're starting to see other people kind of, you know, show where they stand, right? Like Rachel is definitely a little bit more team bananas, right? Where we didn't really know where her head was at for a long time. Um, And she definitely has played up the I hate bananas mantra on social media. And, you know, when she gives speeches about how the backbone of the show was built on women. um, Kind of ironic. Yeah. We didn't realize she had a seat on the on the banana boat. Yeah, I I would have never I would have never pegged her uh, for that, especially because you know from what we hear through the rumor mill, Tina and bananas had had drama on the season. Tina and Rachel are very close, you know, but 
you know, I, I will say, like, my only hope, my only hope, I'm a hopeless romantic. My only hope is that everybody fucking continues and remembers how pissed they are at each other in the game. Like, I'm all for, like, being cool with each other, like, when the game's done, like, shaking hands and, you know, and, and you know, being like, hey, we're cool. But as soon as the game's back on, I hope everybody fucking remembers. Because I'm going to remember. I remember every fucking thing. And every person that I'm, like, holding on to shit against, like, I may be nice and cordial to them now outside of the game. It's right back on as soon as we're in the game again. And I want everybody to keep that same energy. Because we need a little bit more umph here in these episodes. Like, the, I think Casey and Tori's elimination probably would have been way more intense. You got two in intense girls going at each other. Great competitors going at each other. But they're both best friends. So they're making but, jokes towards each other during the hey, fucking hey. elimination. They're, they're not just best friends. They're not just best friends. They're brothers. Like, uh, you know, I didn't know that uh, Squeak was on this episode. Is that brother? <laughs> yeah. Up, I, you know, <laughs> not going to condone kidnapping, but couldn't, you know, the Squeak challenge. What's his name? Yeah. Oh, uh, um, what the fuck I feel like name? it's Stretch or Squeak or Sketch. Is it Sketch? Yeah. I don't fucking know. Hey, Who cares? Tell us in the Who chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't condone kidnapping, but I feel like this is where challenge producers needed to kidnap Nani and just hold it over. Be like, Casey, we're, you know, we're going to. Do physical harm to her or I don't know something to get her going because Casey seemed like she couldn't care less you, you mean like this is like her saw moment like uh, we got we got your fiance in the corner if you want to have a wedding and babies you need to win this elimination you know what would help motivate Casey giving her a headbanger give her something physical to do give Tori something physical to do you know the last oh. thing I want to hear Man. I never want to hear it again Jordan Put the propaganda out there again this episode. Tori did a little bit too of like, Tori doesn't believe in herself. But she's truly like better than what even she believes. I'm like, come on. Come on. You, you, you've been in the game too long. And you've won a season. And like, you've been to finals. Like, you can't be here going like, oh, and I still don't believe in myself. Casey's championship is only ba based off the, fa the back of her fucking up. The entire first half of a final and then being gifted an elimination win against Nani to get CT as her partner. Like, Tori at least won an entire final, like, basically outright with Devin in Ride or Dies. It's like, have more faith in yourself. Like, come on. Well, the headbanger, I think it's what we needed there just to break up that camaraderie. Because you can say, say, you know, it's a hall brawl. I doubt we'd see it twice in a season, but just, you know, for instance, six. It's a hall brawl. You could say, oh, yeah, I know we're going to go. You know one of them's going to hit harder than what they were expecting, and it's going to get the blood pumping, going to get you riled up and pissed off, be like, well, that shit isn't happening again in round two. Like, I'm going to run right through her fucking mm -hmm. chest. And, and, oh, and, yeah. God forbid, and God forbid they give Devin a physical elimination for the first time in his challenge career. Wow. I we mean, that's another, that. that's another story in itself. I, oh, oh, I have I, my theories. <laughs> I, was pers I was personally shocked um, at the lack of urgency, um, you know, from Devin, right? Like, he's clearly fired up. This is definitely something that's in his wheelhouse. He's had a pretty great season up until this point, right? He had the fire lit under his ass, um, you know, and Jordan was spot on when it comes to this stuff. I mean, I... You know, I have my own DJ company since I was 16. Cables and unknotting cables, you know, until you eventually learn, like, you should wrap cables and keep them separate from <clears throat> things. But, you know, the sense of urgency is, is there. That's the only way you get the cables, like, unknotted. It's not like this th slow, methodical, you know, thing, especially when you're on a timeline to set up, like, you know, sound equipment. And, and other things like that, right? So, like, him going through this, like, methodical, you know, side of things, when he had a similar elimination to this on Vendetta's where he was sprinting back and forth because it was a time thing. This wasn't just about untangling the cables. This was about getting the cables in the right spots. And mm -hmm. the more reps you get, the better chances you have at winning. Yeah, for sure. I, I was sort of surprised by it. I feel like part of me believes that there was a – like Devin thinking like 
he 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 comes into this off of the back of a win. Like he he doesn't have to prove himself in that regard of like oh I need to get a a win here. I almost feel like he's somehow like thinking well if I lose here it can help throw shade onto the people who put me into this position and I have an ego and I want them to fail. So if by me going out it can screw all of them over, then so be it. Cuz like I would have expected more from Devin here. Yeah, I, here's the thing. All right, when Bananas was trying to fuck with my relationship, I turned into a different kind of human. And, you know, was winning fucking dailies, was winning eliminations, was talking that shit. Like, I wasn't nice about it. Like, I made people feel the pressure. Like, I feel like... I feel like nobody is making anybody feel the pressure anymore, right? Like, they get into an argument, and then it's like, yeah, but, you know, besties. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, and, and, like, I just want to sit here and fucking call out Michelle for a little bit because I give Devin a lot of fucking credit. Because if Cara ever fucking said, ever, some of the shit that Michelle has said after somebody tried to get in between the relationship, I'd be like, Okay, thank you for the mediocre sex. You could fuck off. You could fuck off. Go fuck off somewhere else. And I'm going to go fuck off with whoever else I want. Like, if, like, even the first conversation that happened, like, where she tried to get upset with him for telling him what Banana said to her, which I think, ladies, what you have to understand, as men, if we're, if we're dating you, if we're talking to you and somebody pulls some shit like that, that's crossing the line. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not your fucking place to sit there and be like, well, but you know, like now I feel like I shouldn't tell you anything. It's like, no, you should tell me things because I should know when somebody's trying to get in between my relationship or not. Because in the olden days that would either lead to a sword fight or a duel to the death. Okay. We live in a modern world, so we can't do that anymore. But Devin even handled that situation way too calmly, which I think gave Michelle a little bit too much this episode to sit there and be like, oh, so like what? We're supposed to just like walk up to him and just be like, sorry, buddy, we're no longer working with you. Yes, that's exactly what you're supposed to do if my dick is inside of you and we're working together and I'm protecting you and somebody's coming in and trying to fucking do that. That would be like if all of a sudden somebody wants Michelle out of the fucking game, guarantee you. If Dan was like, no, but that's my friend, she'd be like, oh my god, are you fucking serious? Like, you're not protecting me? Like, somebody wants me out of the game and you fucking do it? Like, it's ridiculous. And she is that girl. She's that girl. That would, like, sit there and, like, say some dumb shit like she said the past two episodes in regards to this situation. And then turn around and be like, if the roles were reversed, be like, I can't believe, like, my man's not fucking sticking up for me. Yeah, it's, uh... Do you know what I mean? Like... I, I was, it's I was, pretty I was rough. Blown away. No, it's pretty rough because even if you go back to where it started, you know, going all the way back to bananas planting that seed, is no matter what he wants to say, as he's looking out for her or whatever, you know, propaganda is on this week. If this was really you were concerned about the friendships and nothing else, you would have also had a talk with Devin and not just like, hey, I want to pull both of you aside, or can I talk to you one after another, something along those lines. So not just that Devin has to hear from Michelle, Banana said mm-hmm. what now? Because that mm-hmm. changes everything entirely. And then it leads into gaslighting going back and forth. And so now we're at the point where at the beginning of this episode, Devin's just straight up there talking in circles because he's like, we got to go after Bananas. And Michelle is like, wow, well, does that mean I have to as well? And Devin's like, I fight my own battles. It's just like, all right, now... Now no one's making sense and we're all... Yeah, but once again, like, that's that's the boundary thing. Like, that right there would be like, listen, I don't need you to fight my battles for me, right? Like, clearly, you know, when it when it came to, like, Karna, I didn't need her to fight my battles for me, obviously. I handled that shit. However, if she sat there and was like, yeah, well, I'm still going to be nice and cordial with them, I'd be like, okay, well, then fuck off. Like, you could go go over there. You know what I mean? Like, it's another thing. Like, listen, if you want to repair relationships and shit like that, like, totally fine. Right? Like, 
after the fact, but like when you're in the heat of battle, right? Like I've I've played sports against like friends of mine on in wrestling, in soccer, and if in that game it's getting absolutely fucking wild with them and someone on my team or me, I expect my team to have my back and I'm going to have my team's back. And then after the game, I'll be like, hey, bro, good game. Sorry about how, you know, I fucking went after you. Next time, don't fucking slide tackle, um, you know, my, my defender and cheap shot him like from, from the side and I won't fucking come and elbow you in the face when the ref's not looking, you know. But, hey, we're boys now again until the next time. And then, like, if you want to get me back, then cool. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a timing thing, right? Like, nobody's saying, yeah. like, like, Devin's not sitting there being like, don't be friends with bananas, ever. It's just like, in this game, in this moment, with what he's doing, this guy's enemy number one to me. And I would like mm-hmm. you to have my back as my partner. I'm not saying I need yeah. you to, but I would like you to. Um, and that's important, like, early on in a relationship, right? As the relationship goes on, you know, you play your own fucking game. Like, you know, you're, you're like a married couple, right? Like, you come back home. You're like, all right, like, how was the fucking day? It was good, right? Early on in the relationship, it's like, you know, especially playing the game, it's like, dude, deal with the friend shit after the game's done and and squash that shit. But, like, in the game, like, now it's like Devin's going home. Michelle's still in there. You know? And, and, and look at the two guys that she even says are the only two guys that are riding for. Yeah, uh, have fun with the cachet that Kylan and Josh have right now. Uh, but it goes with what you're saying. It's like, I, I've been thinking about it so much because I feel like I would also struggle with it a bit, but like, I would still only understand more so what you're saying, Polly, of like, because I also have that sports background. I've faced my friends. I've gotten heated with my friends. It's like, I'll let, I'll be heated in the moment when the game is done. I'll repair that relationship. <coughs> I can be good with you. It's whatever. But in this game, it's like that, that kind of like, in this game, you're dead to me, and I'm going to do everything in my power to t- send you home. I think players like Michelle, players like Josh, like these players that are all like very much, they weave their social game within their friendship as well. It's like you need to be able to create that separation or you're going to get the backlash from like, or, or be prepared for the backlash from podcasters, from the community, from the players themselves, especially if you're Josh in this case, where it's like, no matter what decision you make, someone's going to be mad at you because you decided to make your social game your friendship game. Well, I mean, this is what I've been saying to Josh for years. I mean, he, 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 here's the history of Josh and I in a nutshell, okay? Before War of the Worlds won, Natalie puts me in touch with him and says, hey, this is my brother. He's going to be coming on the show. You have to take him under your wing. You have to watch out for him. I go, okay, I will. He goes home first. Alon gets hurt. but So he comes back in, and I take this guy Fucking under my Alon. wing, right? Now, it was just a shitty situation because at that point in time, Amanda and Kara were at each other's throats. I was trying to get that relationship to be mended because I was like, hey, Josh is with me. You're safe. So don't worry about it, <clears throat> right? Um, regardless, doesn't work out. You know, Josh ends up going home with Amanda earlier. We come into War of the Worlds too, and he's talking to me leading up to it after doing podcasts with me, being like, bro, you have these people scared on their heels. Like, I'm so happy that, like, you're my brother, like, you're my friend, all this stuff. Comes into War of the Worlds too, like, you're my number one. And I go, okay, great. You're my number one because, you know, I don't really have anybody that I work with. Like, yeah, I would like Turbo was coming in and I, I worked with him for a little bit. You know, Wes was coming in. I never I, I worked with him for a little bit on War of the Worlds one. But he ultimately with Hunter was the reason why I went into elimination on War of the Worlds one, even though he'll never admit it because it was never caught on camera. Um, so on War of the Worlds two, like when Josh came in and he immediately sided with the other side that was actively going at me when I was saying to him moves that we should make as a team, like me and him wise to keep us both safe long term, And he was actively going against it to please this group of people that he had never played before, hung out before. I took that of a, as a massive insult. So then when I started going at him and he started 
throwing like the same verbiage that these people were like it, hurling at me. I was like, all right, motherfuckers, you're dead to me. Okay. And that is exactly in a nutshell, like what is happening in real time on this season is making too many promises to too many people. All right. But I will say this, like I've said to him for all this time, I was your only real friend when you came into this show. All of these other people are really not your real friends. They just know that they can use you and manipulate you. And you will always be at the bottom of their list. And when you're ex- uh, dispendable or uh, expendable, sorry, when you're expendable, you're gone. And they'll make mm-hmm. you feel bad and they'll gaslight you and they'll do whatever. And that's exactly what we saw when him and Tori got into the argument over the Naya and Kylan situation, right? Tori, like, he was rightfully upset. Um, Tori fucking was dogging him, which as a friend you shouldn't do. Um, and then she tried to gaslight him. This episode. He's clearly doing something because he's gotten himself in a situation where he's promised too many people too many things. And instead of all of his friends being like, well, this guy's had our back for, I don't know, fucking five seasons. At this point, they're all like, oh, fuck this kid. He's an idiot. He promises too many people things. He fucks things up. Like already just being like, oh, you're not going to do exactly what the cool kids want. Like you're a fucking loser. And I don't think that that's okay. And this is this is 100% everything that I've been saying to Josh. Um, you know, since him and I have kind of like rekindled our friendship, like since USA 2 and, and, and uh, even, you know, leading up to this season. Um, although I will say the fact that I saw him talking to Theo saying you should fucking vote Paulie in. Like, all right, motherfucker, now you're back on my shit list. But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to still shoot him straight with what the fuck's going on where it's like, these people don't actually have your back, bro. You benefit them more than they benefit you because you're the one that does all the fucking social work and builds all the relationships. And then they just sit on their asses and do fuck all. They do nothing. They don't try to make relationships. And that was clear when Casey tried to talk to Rachel. She had no idea. what to Yes. I I think it can be, so before we get into like the whole Rachel thing, I think it with Josh, it can be a little bit of both is a, he's definitely at the bottom of the Alliance. You see how easy it is for everyone to shit on him. And it's just like, Josh, this isn't the first time they've shit on you. This is the first time that they've been caught on camera shitting on you. This happens all the time. He's unfortunately probably the guy that's in the group chat that they have another group chat that everyone's in it except for him. And I feel bad for him, but then it's also going to the other hand is you can't feel bad for him because he does make all the promises in the world. And I think his misstep is, is he doesn't have a clear cut priority. So being like, this is my top three people that I'm sticking with no matter what. It seems like how he can always be manipulated and changed based upon his emotions. His priority list is constantly turning And so that's where the frustration from everyone else comes because it's like, bro, if we weren't the last one that talked to you to put you in this, you know, push you to making this decision, we're afraid that someone else came in and talked to you and completely did a 180 on what we just discussed. Yeah. Alex, you go first. I'll weigh in on what Dan just said. Okay. Yeah. So I agree. Like, I I think ultimately Josh is – he's a player that plays – with his heart first, which makes it very hard for him because in every environment he has a friend. Like, he has a friendship in some way or another that he's like, I'm rooting for this person. And for the viewers, it comes out of nowhere. Like, to us, we don't know that he's been training with Rachel all this time Mm -hmm. while he was going on his fitness journey. We don't know that. Just out of nowhere, he's just like, oh, you know, I have a special uh, place in my heart for Rachel. You have a special place. How big is your heart? How big is your heart that you have a special place in it for like 500 challengers in it and whatever amount of Big Brother players like you you have and now Telemundo people who knows who knows what how how big this heart is he might have the biggest heart ever in the history of the world but that can only take you so far that's the one thing I'll give Casey credence to is that he gives too many I got you's I owe you's whatever because he plays with his heart first now. To go on the other side and what Polly brought up, he does the work for all these people. Like, sure, they all do the like Casey always gets propped up about her social game. Dan and I have been talking about it. We feel like we never actually see her social game. 
we know that she does the social game off the show. We never see it on. So then you brought up the Rachel thing, and I was I was roasting her about it to Dan, being like, "How can you be going on talking about your social game? You're clowning Jenny because she doesn't have the social game, and your pitch as a strategic social player is to go to Rachel and be, you know, <laughs> I, I we congrats on your way. like, Polly. <clears throat> I know we haven't talked, but like, it was always unspoken that." Me and you were allies in this game. Like, so now that For I'm in sure. this place of vulnerability, like, I, I am talking to you now. I know we've I had zero conversations, you, but I, I cannot promise you that I'm going to keep talking to you after you save me. But, like, we, we could have a game relationship here. And, and, but that, that's exactly what, I, what, I'm, what I'm alluding to here is it's like Josh gets himself into trouble because. I don't. I don't think it's the last person that talks to him is the one that manipulates him. I think he just puts whatever chess piece is usable at that time. And the problem with that, when it comes to the challenges, yes, it is a game of chess, but you know, you kind of have to identify the people you're working with with the pieces, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. So somebody that's always a pawn for you needs to always be a pawn for you. Somebody that's your queen always needs to be a queen. Somebody that's your knights, your rooks, your bishops always need to be those. And the, and, and the problem with him is one season, you know, like Casey could be his rook. And then the next season, Casey's a pawn, you know, and one season Tori's the knight. And then the next season Tori's the pawn. You know what I mean? And that's where he gets himself into trouble because he plays it off, off as like, oh, I'm trying to protect too many people. It's like, no, brother, you're playing the game of Big Brother. That is what you're doing. You're playing the game of Big Brother where you have relationships with all these people and your way of getting to the end is being able to strategically play out which relationships have more value at that point in the game. So he had all these relationships basically looked at it at that point in the game and was like, what is about to benefit me right now? And it's the fact that Rachel's in power. So Rachel's the one that I'm going with. Okay. Um, you know, Johnny wants me to throw him a bone. Okay. I'm going to play out how that might work out for me. Um, you know, on my team. And the thing is someone like that is going to get away with it until it fucking bites him in the ass because he then, you know, goes to work when the, when the, uh, when the season is done, you know, mends all of the relationships and he's very good at mending those relationships and nobody comes into the next scene and is like, yeah, I remember that you promised me, you know, and everybody last season. So I'm getting rid of you first because I want all of those chess pieces that you have free now. Like that's how I play the game. I look at it like who controls the chess pieces. And if, if I want, some of these chess pieces and some of these chess pieces, but there's one person that controls all those chess pieces. Well, I know like Rachel described it phenomenally tonight on how to do it. And I, and I make those same kind of moves. Well, if I want to be more important to this person and this person, I need this person and this person gone. And she got what she wanted, right? Devin's gone. Casey's gone. So now Josh and Tori both closer to Rachel now protecting her. And that's exactly how you need to play the game, right? But he gets away with it because nobody goes in and is like, oh, you control all the connections to these relationships? Slice, right? The same way people don't go in and they see, oh, Bananas has control of all these things? Slice. And then it gets to a point in the game where everybody's like, oh, fuck, how do these people have so much control of the game? Duh. So, well, well, then you, sounds... you have like the Jordan confessional of it all too, which is like, Jordan's talking about Rachel's options and he's like sure Ryan is your best friend of 20 years but you should throw him in because it's the smarter move to grab onto the alliance and I put a tweet out there I'm like newsflash to anyone who ever plays the challenge agreeing to help save multiple people from the power alliance that you were not included in until this very moment where they desperately need you to save them you aren't going to ever be a part of them. You can be Kylan, as I said last week. You can be the taint of the alliance. Like, go up there and keep licking it up. But it's like, He's a tool. you are at the bottom. 
you're at the bottom because they know that you're going to keep volunteering because you like your screen time and you get to go down in elimination. So, although I will give I will give Kylan credit for his target choices. For sure, his target choices today lead me to believe that he knows how to adapt on the fly and he's very aware of what's going on in the house. Okay. And he kind of uses the smile and the nice guy thing as like a way Mm -hmm. to kind of be like, "Ah, I don't really know what's going on, but he's very, very aware with what's going on. Right. Because his targets on the men's side, bananas, Derek and Ryan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and then his targets on the women's side, Okay, obviously Rachel for throwing him in, but then Aviv, and then Jenny, which he clocked as two people who were working with Bananas. So he's in real time seeing where the divide in the house is lining up and coming, and almost like in a way inadvertently taking his line in the sand with Mm -hmm. the people who are going to be looking to go after uh, Bananas, who's attached to Laurel, who's attached to Jenny, who's attached to um, Aviv, okay? And he's not going to get any blowback for it because Bananas, Laurel, um, you know, Jenny and Aviv, Bananas and Laurel are going to look at Kara before they look at Kylan. They're going to look at, um, they're going to look at uh, Ryan uh, before they look at Kylan. Um, They're going to look at Corey before they look at Kylan. Right, and they might even look at Theo, and possibly Josh before they look at Kylan. So he kind of that move was like a very subtly smart move. No, well, I get it. They're gonna and, keep and, calling but, him, but say, it's like, they're I, gonna keep calling him the calculator. I need to stop calling him the calculator stop because it. he did not stop, stop solve it with math problems. I could have solved shit. math problems faster than him. Stop! Stop it with Kyborg. Like, stop! Stop trying to get this kid nicknames. Just let him be Kylan. Just let him be kindly. But, but this, is my, this is my fucking problem with the people nowadays on the fucking show. And the OGs aren't any better because they fucking feed into it, dude. I didn't get no fucking special nicknames when I came on this show. Wait, that was fucking Joker. better than most of the rookies that you're seeing come on to the fucking show now. I came in and was actually better than these people in now. And people were like, oh, this fucking person. Person great. Fucking team, person to beat. Nickname here, nickname there. It's like. What the fuck happened to earning your stripes? What happened to it? We're just we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna mm-hmm. give people credit before they've earned the credit. But like my my issue is like the phrasing of how they do it because like they try to talk about like how he's this like unstoppable beast. I'm like, well, if he was this unstoppable beast, why doesn't he have two challenge wins? Like, why didn't he win Challenge USA and uh, and Ryder dies if he he can't be he, stopped by anybody? Well, he he was out early on. Yeah, USA. he was like halfway through yeah. USA then, one. Yeah, and then and then loses he, to Norris and uh, and alongside Horacio in the uh, like the finals version of the eliminations. But it's like, <laughs> just let this dude compete, do his thing. Like, good on him, good on him. I'm not gonna give him full credit for this move though. Like. It makes sense for him because it's the ultimate cop out moves based off what's available. He's not going to pick Naya. That's clear. He's not going to pick Michelle because they are allied together. See, I don't know why. Like, I, I don't I, know I, why either. They, they have not explained it. Like, hey, they Michelle, not explained Olivia, it. remember last season? We're individual yeah. now. Fuck you. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the Olivia apparently beef is gone. It's whatever. Uh, so. You only have four real options, and it's the three people that he listed and Kara. And I legitimately think he was about to pick Kara, and then in real time was like, oh, wait. Jenny also has, even though I volunteered, she has also picked me to be here, and she also saved bananas. So then, to your point, goes in, okay, right, maybe I'll Maybe I'm giving Jenny him too much like, credit. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm thinking how I would be thinking in that situation and thinking. I, 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 think, you're, yeah, I think you're giving your, your – I'm think... going to give you your credit. Here's my thing with Kyle. Be I don't think he's unbeatable. I don't think no. he's what everybody's making him out to be. I think when you put the pressure on him and you come at him hard and he's not able to just kind of get by like when Alyssa Lopez was like, you know, coming for you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he went home. Like, I think he rode 39, 
and was able to kind of, you know, do all right in those eliminations because there was no real pressure. It's like, oh, I'm going against, a, you know, a champ most of the time, right, which is very impressive to do that. I would like to see how Kylan performs if somebody comes in to a season and is like, I know your fucking game. I'm coming for you, motherfucker. You can't smile your way out of this shit. Then see how he performs in those eliminations. I do hope to see somewhat of a deep run from him solely so we can figure that out. Because if you were just – he gets talked up so much. But all right, so we're down to 18 people left. So that means there's nine guys left. What scenario does it have to be for him to be like, well, he's definitely winning that final? Because I don't think that scenario exists. If there's nine guys that are left in the house, at the very well, highest, he's a fifth on there. I don't think that he's – I think he's more in that six to seven range for final he, threats. He beats Josh. Yeah. Okay. He beats Ryan. Yeah. Yep. Okay. He beats this version of Theo. He beats this version of Theo, but once again, you know, Theo in a Unless final. Unless Theo who starts knows. cutting halfway yeah. through the season. Um, but in, until you've been to a final, you know, it's it's hard to kind of, it's hard to you know say that, right? Mm -hmm. um, because people who've been to a final, it's like your brain kind of knows how to clock in. But yeah, let's say we give him Theo, and let's say we give him kind of the nod on Corey just for the ability to do math and solve puzzles better. Okay. Right. He's not beating Jordan. No, no he's not beating bananas. Um, he's not being Derek. Nope. Like people don't yeah, understand nah. this about Derek. Like Derek's actually a, a silent like dog. Mm -hmm. He was, you know? he was killing the uh, all-stars four final until that, like that shock collar elimination thing or that shock yeah. triangle whatever yeah but he he's he's a dog like he can swim he can run he can solve puzzles he can do yeah. math he's a well-rounded uh challenger you know what i mean so mm -hmm. um derek's one of the people where it's like he he has such a good social game that you really don't consider how good he is as a competitor um but he actually is a really really good competitor and um, I don't think Kylan's beaten Nehemiah either. No. Put respect on Nehemiah, people. The, got, Nehemiah's the reason why Era 2 stayed in the middle, I feel. It's like, dude, dude was out here praying on Jordan's downfall, doing yoga. It's like... Having he, visions. Having visions in his zen state of mind. It's like, low-key good episode for Nehemiah. <laughs> I agree. No, I thought it was good. I think it's been – it hasn't been uh, over all like great season for Nehemiah, but the clips that you get of him, I think for the most part, you show why he was brought back and not only why he was brought back, but he deserves to be there because Nehemiah is great at that kind of a secondary character. He isn't going to be your focal point of the season and – nor the focal point of every episode, but every other episode you're getting some good clips from him and he makes most of the time that he's there, he makes the show better. Like, I need people to sit down on, like, the Derek of it all, being like, Nehemiah's proving why he's been here. And, like, first off, regardless of how he got it, because we know why he got it, Nehemiah has a championship under his name. So, uh, Derek, I need you to kindly... Not speak on Nehemiah like that. He deserves better. Uh, but, like, even still, as a competitor himself, like, Nehemiah's always proven that he is a good competitor. It was just that he hasn't gotten multiple wins. Like, his time on the show isn't like the time of Era 3 and 4 where, like, people were just constantly being pulled back, pulled back, pulled back. Like, he oh, needed man. All-Stars to re-show people, like, this is what I can do. He was a secondary character in the J.E.K., like yeah. run of the show because that's when he debuted and he stopped for, I mean, he stopped at rivals, which was his last time that we saw Kenny and Evan. So that was his entire time on the show. And I think had he made his debut, you know, he was a few years older or younger. Maybe he stands out a little bit more, but that time where he was on the show, they had Johnny, they had Evan, they had Kenny, they had West that were all fresh to the show and Nehemiah was kind of just, you know, lagging behind that top crop. 
Man, Nehemiah with a Wes on this season, though, or or in future seasons, because like I I think Nehemiah <clears throat> is good enough to be on main show moving forward, at least for a few more years. But it's like if him and Wes were just here on this season, he, his stock would be even higher for me, because like ultimately I think Wes would get the the shot taken at him before Nehemiah would, and he would have Wes to lean on for his political game. Well, that solely depends on what Wes do we get. Because remember, when Wes comes in the challenge, Wes either makes a deep run in the game, or Wes is gone by episode three. Oh, Wes wasn't going to so. be gone by episode three on this season. No. No, most likely not, but that's the only, it's the only caveat with Wes, is simply there is a large variance on what version of Wes you're getting. Okay, we're, we're about, what, 40 minutes in? I want to talk about the hypocrisy of the Vacation Alliance a little bit here, if y'all don't mind. I was, I was going to say, we, we could talk about that. Like, there's some, there's some uh, Twitter feuds that I want to talk about. No. Yeah, let's, well, say, let's, say st- Twitter for, let's say Twitter for the end for some good okay. comedy well, here. We <laughs> still have 30 minutes in us to discuss about that riveting elimination, all right? Like... Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> I don't think that elimination. I, <laughs> I don't think that elimination to needs to be spoke about at all. That was like no, it, was, was, not. it was only fitting that Casey was involved in it. But go ahead, Alex. Vacation Alliance. <laughs> it's just the hypocrisy. I, I I just need to really emphasize the hypocrisy of this group because it's like they they're all upset. Like everything we said in the first half of this episode is all valid about like the game and how it's being played but as soon as they are in the hot seat and actions that they chose because dan and i disagree on this i still hold what i said last week they all volunteered thinking that tj was going to pull the wool and say it's an individual game now haha we're we'll still have targets but like don't worry about it like we're, we're in individuals they got overconfident they got over cocky and they put themselves in a shit position then they were all vulnerable. One automatically in elimination. One basically knowing that they were going to be put in elimination and going, well, people should start thinking about their individual games. Like, if we all have to think about our individual games, then the other side gets to win. I'm like, that's what you guys have been doing for, like, the last five years. This is what you guys have been doing. Now all you're right. on the other foot for the first time ever, and suddenly you guys are like, Oh my god, now we we have to play the individual games because Josh isn't good enough to talk to Rachel? I'm like... That's... Alright, Casey's comment there is what pissed me off when she was like, no, no, well, Josh is doing what's best for him, not not what's best for the Alliance. Like, we're halfway through the game. Fuck off, Casey. Dude, and that's my thing is... is, is I, I always say it to this day. The only regret that I have from War of the Worlds 2 is that I did not turn on my Alliance sooner. Mm-hmm. Like, I was under this thing of, like, no, I want to, like, stay loyal to these people forever. Where, like, it, there was a certain point where, like, I was going to the final no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I could have easily turned on, like, Ninja and Rogan. Um, <clears throat> you know, even CT. Um, and and been like, all right, yeah. No, this is it. <laughs> Just fuck it. Who cares? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, the hypocrisy is this. And this will always be my biggest gripe about the Vacation Alliance is when they had one season where they were getting absolutely mauled by a major alliance. You're welcome. All they did was cry and fucking complain about it. Then they've mauled everybody for the past four or five years by replicating that same process. And now they're finally getting a lot of pushback. And they're not just on a season collecting a fucking paycheck all the way until the end. And they're upset about it. It's like, dude, you guys have had free rides to collecting paychecks for the past five fucking years. Enough like, with your hypocrisy. I think everybody should go in and play an individual game. I actually think everybody should go in every season and be like, we need to target the vacation lines until they're so frustrated of going home early that they're no longer friends. Yeah. And want to work together coming into a season. Like... The best like, they're going to start they're... taking shots at each other in order to distance right. themselves from each other to stay further in the game. That's what needs to happen. Yeah, but the, and the issue is they will think about this or they'll take it from here and they're going to be like, yeah, you're right. Next season, we target Josh. Yep, and that will show them. I was going to say. 
And then we'll all still go to the end together, but we'll target Josh this time. I don't know, man. The Vacation Alliance is finally getting a lot, a lot of screen time. Because and they they're now talking to themselves talking as it, like. the Vacation Alliance. I would be very shocked. And honestly, if you're a challenger, whether you're brand new and you're coming onto the show or whether you're a veteran coming onto the show, if you come onto this fucking show and you want to work with Vacation Alliance, just don't don't even don't even fucking show up. Because it's like you're you're wasting a a a, a spot of somebody that would like want to come in and like maybe make themselves a character like you're mm-hmm. wasting a spot to just be like a sheep exactly or like and like stop bringing these like no name international people who don't know anybody so then they're automatically going to jump to this stop bringing group. international people period why do we have them yeah we're not getting pulled to their shows outside of like the and office. they're not bringing any like- new viewers to our shows yeah. Like, I understand the Big Brother crossover, and, like, but if I'm being honest, the Challengers have given Big Brother people and CBS people so much fucking pushback where it's like, we get more viewers to our fucking shows. At least yeah, we like, bring and, something like, to your fucking show right, and a like level the MTV, of class. The, like, the MTV is channel it? itself is, like, a dying channel, like, outside the challenge. Like, we were joking before this pod went on that, like, this episode could have been 15 minutes. I was going to counter that by saying, like, you know, God forbid they have 45 more minutes to show another three episodes of ridiculousness. Wait, that's so, all there is. Hang on. So, so, so you're telling me that over in Turkey, when Turbo is on, the entire nation of Turkey is not tuning in to watch the show? It's not even on. No, the, they're the, streaming the, it illegally. Yeah, because it's not even airing in <laughs> their countries. <laughs> Turbo like, might be the one. Turbo might be the one exception to the rule of getting an entire nation to watch. Nobody from England gives a fuck about the English people who are on the challenge. That's it's a small percentage. Nobody from Germany cares. Nobody from South America cares. Their biggest market that they had a chance to do something with was Argentina because in Argentina when it aired, it was like top three shows on TV. And they haven't brought anybody else from Argentina on. Which, that would have been a nation that would have like been like, Oh shit, our Bring person's on the Huey. American version, we gotta support them. Yeah, like, so, Huey. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, fucking Huey. Nobody's <laughs> tuning in to Huey on the challenge. Now, I, you know, I can't speak for other things that he's involved in, you know. I've seen some tweets. But, you know, maybe people are tuning into that more than they're tuning into this. But, dude, like the... The, and the thing is, from the MTV people themselves, they have never had the hatred for the foreign people that they've had for people who actually bring fucking viewers to their show. Like, the foreign hey, people have just been like, well, you guys are kind of fucking cool. Like, you your accents. And you know why? It's like, fuck off. You, it, well, and you know why? It's because the, the people that came from Big Brother, from Survivor, like, from the CBS shows, come from a game background. So they're like, oh... We are going to have a tougher time with you. We're going to have a tougher time pulling the wool over a poly. Yeah. We're going to have a yeah. tougher time, like, going around a, a survivor winner. You know, like, that's just yeah. the perception of it. It doesn't matter how they are in theory or, or in actuality. It's just, like, the idea of it all. They're like, oh, this person from overseas came from their version of Jersey Shore. You came from Big Brother. Who's going to be the easier person to pull in? Not the person from Big Brother. Yeah. It's a lot easier to fool Corey coming off of, you know, the real world than it is someone coming from a competition show. That's fair. I see your point with that. That's fair. Where That's he's, the only, he's, that's he's the the only logic about, yeah, those, I can have for the threat. Those crops of rookies that were coming on for, that were, you know, everyone from Britain or whoever else they pulled from, they were essentially just another version of the rookies coming from the MTV shows. They never had any type of competition background or how to work the game like the challenge. So to them, they were the same type of rookies where Big Brother, Survivor, they had more strategy. And it's why when you came on, Pauly, and then, you know, Michelle, others, they started really shitting on Big Brother and the Survivor right away because it wasn't the easy walk in the park that they were used to when a quote-unquote rookie arrived on scene. 
And, and when they were asked to be put onto the CBS version of the challenge, uh, did they say no? They did not. <laughs> they did not say no. They were there. So um, they they did not say no because once again, even though there was only two seasons of that, still got more views than the challenge has ever gotten. Like literally, put it on CBS. Give us music rights, and you will see that viewership. If you just moved it off. You are all under the same damn umbrella now. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, CBS would have to be like a very cleaner version of it because the arguments wouldn't be able to happen. The alcohol and partying wouldn't be able to be shown as much. Like, the hookups wouldn't be able to be shown as much. Um, yeah, like that. It's what what are you willing to give up, or what what like, or what is CBS willing to be like? Okay, we will show this, but like we'll put you on at nine instead of. Eight. Oh fuck! They make Casey their biggest star. Oh, it'd be so bad. Oh yeah, they'll Just all be, be screaming in their Casey's. professionals. Jesus, we'll get a lot more let's goes out of, out of Casey for sure, but it's like. Yeah, it's just like I, I just wanted them to like really reflect on the fact that they themselves put themselves in the situation that they were dealing with. And you can be mad at Josh. The one thing like Laurel said correctly, which is funny because it was also digging at herself without realizing it, which honestly made me laugh even harder listening to her, was when they were yelling at Josh and she's just ears eavesdropping against the door, just going like, oh, they're just mad at Josh because he's playing an individual game now. And so they're yelling at him, and that's just fucking stupid because he's playing for himself. I'm like, hmm, who else yelled at someone because they weren't just cowtailing to a person that felt like they were in a power position, and then that person started yelling obscenities and other horrible shit? Yeah, I think we we all could uh, agree on the fact that 95% of challengers, challengers are hypocrites. Oh, and, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's the, I guess what makes a, a you know, a good, uh, challenger is their lack of self-awareness. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? For, uh, for the confessionals, I should say for the interviews, their lack of self-awareness, like for the ability to be picked apart is, is fucking hilarious and like mind blowing to me. Like the fact that Laurel could sit there and be like, yeah. Josh should be allowed to do whatever he wants when clearly the only reason why you're saying that Laurel is because it benefits your game. But when people want to do whatever they want and it doesn't benefit your game, you turn into a fucking lunatic. Mm -hmm. So like the lack of self-awareness like of challengers is just hilarious. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with the vacation lines, right? As long as Josh is doing what's going to benefit their game, he's their fucking best friend. Second, he does something that's going to benefit his game. He's public enemy number fucking one. It's Johnny Fairplay, Reality TV icon, Survivor Hall of Famer. And I'm talking today about Work Money. Work Money is a nonprofit organization that focuses on lowering costs and raising incomes for all Americans to make American life more affordable and American families more economically secure. They provide products, services, perks, benefits, tips, and tools to help members improve their financial lives. It's time to level up and make more money in this economy. We're talking getting rich. Now, this sweepstakes is giving away $50,000. You can use this to pay your rent, your mortgage. Imagine what you can do with all the money that you'll save. Now, this is put on by Work Money, and this site has all these sick benefits, and it's free. Go sign up right now and get more rich. Now, listen, you can change your life. Now, what would you do if you didn't have to pay your rent or mortgage for a year? Listen, sign up right now for free. Link is available right here in the show notes. Check them out. Personally, I'd get more pinball machines. I'm Johnny Fairplay. I wouldn't lie about that. It's work money. More money. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and Alex, I was never disagreeing with your point that I thought that they were stupid for all volunteering. I just think rather than than them thinking, assuming that TJ was going to switch off the game, I think it was just arrogance of errors three and four. One of them has won every single time. We can put all of ourselves up and nothing's going to happen because we're, you know, the vacation alliance, we're the big swinging dicks of the house and there's nothing that can stop us. And 
they got a little dose of reality tonight. And but it's like you to briefly talk on the daily because we didn't really talk about the daily. I liked it outside that like once you got past and after did like the endurance of it of like choosing who was going to be that person who stayed on top. The reason why Rachel wins is she doesn't even have to ever consider that. All she had to do was like, let's make sure I have three right math questions so I have a couple pegs to lean on. And she got to show out. She got to stay, stay up there on 15 minutes on some small ass pegs. Whereas you have someone like Theo who just drops uh, like, a, like a shit in the toilet like immediately. Uh, and, and I guess that that clip could be used for Fessy in the, yeah. their, uh, tw- <laughs> their invigorating Theo uh, falling. Feed. I, I I might have watched that clip because I, I had to record it because I like I knew it was coming from from watching it on the challenge thing. I have rewatched that clip maybe about ten times because it is freaking hilarious. It's just like him trying to get in a position, which is impossible because he's too tall. Yeah. He's yeah, too yeah. big. That was going to be a terrible, <laughs> terrible time for him. But the fact that he, like, tried to get himself in a position and then, like, he didn't fall after the doors opened. He fell, like, landed and was like, oh, fuck. And then, and then the doors just opened up and he doesn't, he doesn't fall straight, straight down. No. He doesn't do a flip. <laughs> he kind of falls on the diagonal, like, fully stretched out. And, like, he just, it almost was like he was falling in slow motion. It felt I, like it. I lost my mind. I've watched, I've watched that clip too many times. I cannot control my laughter as to how funny it is because, like, the fact that there was, like, <laughs> the fact that he landed and, like, didn't try to, like, to land and then immediately get back on the wall. Like, he landed and, like, immediately accepted his fate, like, like, Fuck. And then it just... Well, he did have the like, good... Think about watching that from the sidelines. All of a sudden, you're counting down your head. Five, four, three, two. You see it open, and Theo falls immediately. I would have lost my mind. I wouldn't have been able oh. to stop laughing. Not only did he accept the debate, <laughs> but, it, you know, it still had a good humor about it when whoever fell from two or Naya. three right away. Naya fell yeah, and immediately. Was just and like... he was like, shit. It lasted a lot longer than I did. Oh man! <laughs> and and then jo- uh, the he Josh the a little bit too. Yeah, like there's so many people going off, like falling, just dumping themselves. You have Josh getting called out for having his full ass foot on the platform. Still, <laughs> gotta try to hide that a little better. <laughs> look, look, it's great. It's not cheating. It's trying. His his whole foot. <laughs> I mean, dude, you got to be more subtle than it. Like, everybody has their subtle ways of, like, cheating, but you got to be able to, uh, <clears throat> you got to be able to hide it from the cameras that exist, and you also got to be in a position to um, adjust yourself if they catch you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he, yeah. was not, he was not prepared. And, like, he he's <clears throat> lucky for his group. Like, ultimately, it doesn't matter based off the result after, but, like, he's lucky that he wasn't the last person. Because, like, if he was the last person, let's say he lasted longer than, like, and was able to win. Like, they, they're they DQ'd. They're DQ'd. Mm-hmm. Their time does not matter anymore. Like, they're last <coughs> because his foot's on the damn platform and not on a peg. Or yeah. hanging hanging loose, like Theo in the water. But no, that's it. Are we sure he was trying to make sure that Casey stayed? Because now that we talk about this more and more, I just see active sabotage. I mean, he stay. put his foot on the platform... He says he's going this to pitch. Be, this could be the, end of the vacation alliance as we know it. Uh, who, knew, uh, who knew? Who knew that the dude who was like the the brittle bones of this alliance would also be? You know what? It's fitting that he's the brittle bones because he's breaking the alliance as we know yeah, it. Jo- Josh was the glue, and now the glue is falling apart. Well, and if we go back to last week, how fitting? Uh, not even fitting. Shocking. Surprising. That it's the Jenny and Theo making their nominations as a group vote that was the catalyst for the Vacation Alliance imploding. Oh that yeah, that was not also, on my bingo card. Also, let's let's, let's bring back that hypocrisy again. Like they're all yelling at Josh, they're all mad at Josh, but like who else said absolutely shit nothing? It was Casey just in there twiddling her thumbs. 
being like, oh, I'm going to win this but That's money my point. Is like they expected, they expected him to do the work for them. It's like... Yeah, but like... Shouldn't the master social player Casey have some flack against her? No, because she's Casey and everyone knows she doesn't actually speak on the challenge. It's like, at a certain point, yes, you can blame Josh and Josh makes himself easy to blame because he's the vocal one. He's the vocal one who also has the relationships. So I'm like, okay, but he, end of the day, even if he fails at helping you, like he still more times than not is probably going to be more helpful to you than someone who only does their work in the off season. Oh, it's commandment number six when you swear into the vacation alliance is Josh shall be the whipping boy. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> Josh, his role. Josh definitely always uh, takes this. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe they woke up. <clears throat> I think, Maybe. I think that now there's, there's a chance to go in and absolutely uh, rip them to shreds. To, to be fair, I thought they woke up last week and then <laughs> we go into this week with, where, where, we end last week talking to be like, I'm pissed at Josh and Casey. We go into this week being like, <coughs> I'm solely relying on Casey to keep me safe this week. I'm like, learn. They're, they're learn idiots. something. There he is. All right, let's talk, let's talk about this Theo and Okay, let, let, yeah, let, let's finish this Twitter, out with Twitter some, this Twitter Put feed. a freaking bow on it. I got to say I'm a little bit embarrassed. You know, you got like era one, era two, era three. Like they're having kind of full out wars on social media. And then just like randomly and unprovoked, Theo's like, somebody send this to Fessy. And then Fessy's like, somebody send this back to Theo. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, should I come out of retirement and start trolling people on Twitter again? Um, because Era 4 has no idea how to troll each other um, on Twitter or they social don't. media. No. Let's, let's just call each other out for a hall brawl. Like, all right, guys. Well, and also it's just like, Oh, so yeah, I got dragged in here. Like, Theo's tagging me and shit. And I'm like, hey, if you guys want to nominate yourselves for me to uh, throw you in, I will happily, happily do that, guys. Yeah, and, and, and then you have Fessel just, like, out here being, like, his his version is, like, the most high school athlete uh, version of beef, like, that you could do of trolling where he's, like, here's my highlight clips of this time that I shoved someone in trampoline basketball. I'm like, I'm yeah, like, he's not the best. Buddy. He's not the best at trolling. It's like, it's like, we get it. You two are huge humans. Um, you know, until they win like balls in or, you know, pole wrestle against people with two hands. Um, you know, cool. You guys can win hall brawls. Congratulations. It's, you know, it's the reason why it's bullshit that people like, you know, especially Fessel, but I guess Theo here. Is Theo, at least I give him credit for what he did in World of Worlds 1 final. It's a hell of a mm -hmm. feat or whatever. But people yeah. like Fessel that are going in, if I used to be this athlete, guess what? I don't care how many people say that it's America's fifth major sport. It's not. That's not what the show is. It's never what it's been. It's never what it'll be. As much as and we would like it to be. Yeah, sure. there's so much other random, stupid, dumb shit. Yes, is there's always going to be a clip of Ryan running on a treadmill looking like he never ran before in his oh, life. Yeah. With, with his hat up like this, like it was still like 2001. Love it's Ryan like, to death, but... I love, I love that, it's man. Not, it's that, not that, a fifth that, sport when that's the clip of you running on a, on a, on a treadmill. But, but with Fessel also, it's like... <clears throat> Theo wins the argument by just saying, like, look what I did in War of the Worlds 1. Like, sure, I didn't win, but like, I was damn close. Where were you in your finals? You you were last, DQ'd, third, fourth, like yeah. <clears throat> Although Theo this size, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think he does as good shot. as he did in the War of the Worlds one uh, final. Yeah, true, true. No, but he still gets ahead that claim, whereas Fessel loses it, to the guy yeah. that he keeps calling like the like he keeps calling Benaz essentially like the senior citizen, the person who should be in the retirement center. He's still beating you in these finals, buddy. It's true. I mean, listen, I, overall I'd give it like a 1.5 out of 10 rating in terms of like a Twitter beef. Oh, yeah. You Up know, your game. Tina hasn't shut the hell up for the past week <laughs> on Twitter. I, the thing about it is it's like I don't – I think she just responds to things just to respond to things because mm -hmm. I saw her respond to something about like the girl Taylor. 
Oh, who's yeah, never yeah, said yeah, anything yeah, about yeah, the yeah, challenge. Yeah. And like, no, the only thing like, she's quote, ever said is she would never compete in the challenge. Yeah, but she's, like, I mean, like, I mean, I'm I'm seeing the writing on the wall, Taylor. You're not fooling anybody. Like, we, I I know that you got a certain phone call. Like, I, I see your stories. I see what you're doing. Um, you've never done this much training in your life. Now, all of a sudden, you're a fitness girl. Um, you, you CBS people need to be more subtle. Um, anyway, the fact is, Taylor has never said anything about the challenge. Mm-hmm. This was a fan account tweeting something, and Tina like quote tweeted it as if like the, as if Taylor said it, and was like doing this whole like thing, and I'm like, Jesus, dude, like you really you're not doing the old people like any favors here, of like not just like just tweeting nonstop, but like being the person where it's like, uh, Grandma, what the fuck are you like? This is a Walmart. Why are you yelling at the cashier? You know what I mean? Like it's like dude, she doesn't even go here, and you're yelling but, at this girl. But she don't you know? That, don't you know? No other challenger can pull nails off of a wall like I can. No. It's a it's a great analogy because she's like you know the grandma that gets logged into Facebook and just starts commenting and sharing everything, and it's just like oh, oh my god, I don't I don't like this at all. Like please, yeah, make Tina it stop. is Tina is like the grandma that figures out social media for the first time. Is like oh. You can quote tweet things. You can reply to. Oh my God! I'm just gonna. Re- I'm gonna do it all all the time. A- a- There's a hashtag. I'm gonna create my own hashtag. See if it takes <laughs> off. She does Tina's thoughts. She already did that. Yeah, but we know you're thinking, <laughs> but, Tina. We know you have thoughts. Ultimately, the point is we would like you to have less less thoughts. <laughs> yeah, Tina, have less thoughts. We love you. Uh, for Theo, we do love Kessel. Tina. Like I, I, I yeah, love I Tina. Love, I love Tina. I'd say like cut your thoughts in half by like fifty percent a week, and you'd be good. <laughs> or, or at least cut whatever you put out as your thoughts uh, by fifty percent. But for the era four people, like if you want to have your beef, like look, we we have more beef with people in our in our or people in our YouTube comments have more beef with us than you guys have beef with each other, and you guys are fucking on the same franchise show actually doing the damn thing. I I have to look at this podcast once a week, seeing the same person say, well, Corey lasted longer than Paulie this season. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? I I, I don't, that, that doesn't, or like me, it's like, me and it's Dan like, are clowns. I'm glad to be a clown. Yeah, I'll put like, my nose what, on every what day. Does that, what does that mean? First of all, <laughs> okay. Nope. There's been nobody in the history of the challenge that has come on and had a freaking streak like me. And then out of nowhere was like, yeah, you got to take four, four years off and start brand new. Give me some time to like get my momentum and like warm back up. All right. Like Corey had his seasons where he went home first on mm-hmm. vendettas. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't have that much time on final reckoning. If we, if we want to be honest about it, he came in as a mercenary late in the game was DQ'd fairly early. And then we didn't, Impossible. We didn't see him again until until what? Total Madness. Yeah. Yeah, it was a madness. couple seasons off. Yeah, it was Total Madness where Nelson went in against Rogan. You know, because yep, Corey Nelson has Nelson went in against Rogan, and we got to watch for the first time, I think, that season, Corey <coughs> in a bunker underground, looking at pictures of his kids. <laughs> Well, I, what I, I think the ba- biggest shade to me was just like you wouldn't say that to Corey's face. I was like, I didn't assault his family. Like, I'm pretty sure I'd say any of this to yeah. Corey's but face. You know if I saw him. I'm, and we're allowed to make jokes I would. at people. I like would, us. and well, I would laugh. If it's you're on like... YouTube commenting on us and you have opinions about me as a challenger, like we're not allowed to have our opinions about people. Like, how fucking narcissistic are you? Shut the fuck up. You don't want beef with us. We'll give it to and, you. And honestly, yeah. I love the comments, though. Like, keep the comments coming because yeah. we love our views. We love our viewers. That, because yeah, that's honestly, keep the would... comments coming because we'll, we'll pull up three comments every episode moving here on out. And whatever episode we do, we will pull up three comments, read them on here, and give our natural reaction to what you're saying. We'll do it. We'll have it can be anything. Video for next week. You could sit there and say, I hate the way that all three of them wear hats every single episode. And, you know, we, we will sit there and we will let you know how we feel about you caring about our hats. <laughs> well, and, great hats every week. We'll start that next week. But, you know, it's just a ridiculous concept because it'd be like, 
you know, you're allowed to have your thoughts and think about stuff. It'd be like every time me or Alex made a point, if Polly was just like, Alex, Dan, shut the fuck up. You weren't there. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, because Stephen A. Smith fucking played in the NBA, and, you know, Stephen A. Smith knows exactly what it's like to be a fucking basketball player. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, there's I'm sorry. Do you want sportscasters for a reason. Yeah, do I, do I need to bring the Stephen A.'s <laughs> list to this podcast every week now and be like, here's my top five. The, the list is fluid. The here's list my is fluid, thing folks. Is, <laughs> these fans are so entitled to think that they can have an opinion on a show that they've never done, that they've only watched, right? But yet we could have a conversation and it's like, I'm able to either like back what you guys are seeing right. or I'm able to be mm -hmm. like, well, actually, this is what really goes down. So, like, there's able to be, like, a give and flow. And, like, I 100% could, like, look at something that I'm seeing on the show and be like, this is what's actually happening. This is what's being shown. But these people are going to be like, well, you weren't, you guys weren't even there. It's like, yeah, neither were fucking you. Yeah. We're, we're all here. But, we're but here we, to have, we have might have time. a little bit of an advantage on you. You know what I mean? Just a little bit. A little Just bit. a little bit. But like, Zach's not even we... there at all. Yeah. But no. Zach knows how the game is played, and he knows the people who play the game. Uh, look, look, I we got our play-by-play, -play, play, but we're all color commentary here. We're here to have a good time and talk the shit. But before yeah. we finish this, Dan, I need a cue to you because we, we got some good Ooh. flack. Uh, we got some good laughs with Paulie's stuff. We got some good laughs with my stuff with the comments. Dan, there was a specific comment made tonight that I know that you had issue with. I want you to speak on it. Wait, which one, which one are we talking about? Oh, we're, Jenny. We're, we're talking yeah. about Jenny West. <laughs> Jenny, she doesn't say shit. For episodes at a time until she's targeted. And I'm a little biased here. You know, there's the sport that I played, you know, my entire life. I'm a tennis player. And she goes in as she's watching the back and forth, of, you know, enthralling elimination between Tori and Casey. It's like, this is like a high-end tennis match going back and forth. Like, can't beat it. I was like, all right. If anyone is watching that and thinks that's what tennis is like... I'm sorry. I'm never going to tell you it's better than basketball. It's better than football. It's a lot more entertaining than that because whatever that elimination bullshit was, I... I would argue I it's better than be basketball done. at least. And it's kind of, you know, it's getting better than football. I mean, listen, I grew up watching the Williams sisters, okay? Mm -hmm. And Nadal versus Federer, like all mm -hmm. those years of like... You had appointment battle. television. Seven-hour yeah. Wimbledon final. Let's go. Baby. Like, I, I grew up in times where there were decent American male tennis players also, you know, where you were kind of pulling for them, being like, maybe you could pull the upset, you know, Andre Agassi um, back in the day, right? right? Like, tennis is fun to watch. That just goes to show me that I don't think Jenny knows what the fuck tennis is. I don't think so either. No, it was... Like, the, the, does she think it's a weight machine? Like, the, is it, like, a specific weight machine at the gym that they just happen to call, like, tennis match? And she's like, oh, this is just, like, a good old tennis match, mate. It's like, because I know I when get I looked at on well, right now. People actually <laughs> scream when they score points in tennis matches. Like, they fucking at least give a fist pump every time they, you know, give a little score. Well, yeah. th there was screaming, but that was me just screaming at myself. When I looked at the time, it was like, all right, we know what the elimination is. 9 10, there's 20 minutes of this shit. Like, motherfucker. Like, hey, it takes a while to un like skew all of those chords. <laughs> Fast forward it. Like, just tell me who wins. That was. There were eliminations that <laughs> we've had discussions about of how fair was this? This was rigged. You gotta get. Give me all of those over this bullshit that we had tonight. Here's the thing. I get it. Season 40. We need the story arcs. But if we are looking at what has worked best, okay? I'm going back to what I witnessed in real time. Mm -hmm. On Final Reckoning, which people go back and they watch it and they're like, oh, the drama of this. I remember the real time commentary from the fans about Final Reckoning. They did not like it, and they didn't mm -hmm. like it because it was an hour and a half episodes, and most of the time we were left with cliffhangers and no eliminations. Mm -hmm. War of the Worlds 1 gave us, the once again, the chef's kiss of the formula where it was one-hour episodes, daily 
absolute mayhem and then elimination. Every episode. And everybody was like, mm-hmm. this is great. War of the Worlds 2, same thing. Daily, absolute mayhem, elimination. You know, so I, I think that, like, if they didn't have an extra 30 minutes to play around with, they wouldn't have to stretch out a, an elimination for 30 mi- and, for 20 minutes. It's, yeah, and, they, and we know that's not that's not 100% productions call like that that's coming from the network being like we want 90 minute episodes but it's like yes. i think the formula should always be one or one hour episodes and then sprinkle in 90 minute episodes for like the bigger episodes <laughs> you know there's more meat on the bone and like hike that up and be like tune in next week for this 90 minute episode like shit's going down and suddenly the fans are like oh okay i'm actually gonna make sure i'm sitting down and watching this and not DVRing it and watching it the next day. Well, I think where they're really struggling with, especially as we keep drawing these episodes, you know, seasons out longer and longer is that they can't do 20 good eliminations. And it's, I'm not blaming them for that. 20 good they eliminations. Can, they can if they want to. Would be they hard would just to repeat could. a bunch of them, different but, variations. But exactly. But why don't we go back to what it was, <clears throat> let's say in the early twenties where it was on a rotation mm-hmm. of four the or wheel. five good eliminations. So either it was on a set elimination schedule, so you knew, all right, it's the second one, so we know we have balls in or whatever it may be. Or you could go back to, I think it was Battle of the Seasons, where whoever won got to pick what type of elimination it was until they were knocked off the board. And then once the whole board was used, we reset and we started that over and over again. Like I'd rather see Mm -hmm. four or five good eliminations that they can use over and over again as opposed to this season where we started out with a bang and outside of one or two, it's been like, eh, I don't really love this. Yeah, like, there's still classics that they haven't used yet. Like, give me the wall comp. Give me the, like, the demolition comps, whether it's, like, just demolishing everything in the room or, like, going down the flight of a tower. Like, give me that. Give me not so fast. Like, give me those untangling shit. Like... Give me like the real stuff that if you want, or, or like the endurance cops, like the one that, like the Kara Naya one, like where you had the giant bungee Reverse cord tug of that war. you had, yeah, the tug of war. It's like, give me that stuff again. Like that stuff's actually fun to watch because you can feel the pain, <clears throat> you can feel how much these people want it. I don't know how much Kylan or Devin want it by untangling cords, like. That, that, that means nothing. As Based a off of that, Devin didn't want it for shit. Well, well no. Dev, Devin <laughs> was ready to have a couple beers, put some sports bets out there, and call it a day. I think if you gave him a beer, he'd actually untangle him faster. If you told him that there was a beer on the other end, oh, yeah, he's, he's winning. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's an episode, folks. Yeah, I that's... hope we were more entertaining than the episode itself, but we have the midseason trailer – Looks like there's more drama. Hopefully they actually show the drama as opposed to the drama that they showed at the, for the premiere that never aired. Uh, so fingers crossed we see more fighting. We see more collapsing of all these different groups and factions and we get to see some fun potential winners. No, the, the mid-season trailer was great. It got me amped up, which is what I needed after watching that elimination. So <laughs> it gives me a lot of hope for what's left in the season and what we're going to see over the next <clears throat> two months or whatever it may be. So pretty pumped up for it. Any final thoughts, Polly? No, I mean, I hope the mid-season trailer lives up to the uh, second half of the season. Yeah, uh, and my last thoughts for Polly will be uh, for Era 4, if any of you want any advice on how to actually have social media beef with people and create some entertainment, uh, holla at my boy and uh, give him some money rate. and he'll help you. So, you know, <laughs> hit me up. <clears throat> and now that uh, – do that. And now that Paulie started a new segment for us, I'm expecting some really good comments, probably even shitting on mostly me and Alex – what you like to that's do. fine that's fine we'll take it the best three comments before we record i will pull them up and we'll go over them live next week so i think that's a great new segment idea we got yeah. but i think that's going to do it spicy for, yeah, the spicier the better the, if it's <laughs> spicier you have a better shot at getting red so it's true 
So let's hear that. But yeah, that's going to do it for us. Uh, as always, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, hit the bell. That way you get notified every time we go live. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your app, your podcast at, make sure to rate and review us five stars. It helps us out greatly. And as always, the best way to support the podcast is become a patron at realitypatron.com. That gets you access to the secret Facebook group, the Q&A every week, as well as all of our podcasts ad-free. Sign up for a month if you don't like it. Johnny will give you your money back. But that's going to do it for us. We will see you after episode 10 next Wednesday. See y'all.